Genetics research has benefited greatly from the release of the human genome sequence. Pyrosequencing is a unique system that allows the analysis of genetic variation as well as RNA allelic imbalance, DNA methylation status, and gene copy number. In this video, we demonstrate a basic pyrosequencing reaction for genetic analysis. Hi, I'm Christy King from the laboratory of Dr. Charles Eby and Dr. Brian Gage in the Department of Internal Medicine at Washington University School of Medicine. Today we are going to show you a procedure for pyrosequencing. This procedure is useful because it's one of the most thorough yet simple methods used to analyze SNPs. Pyrosequencing is based on sequencing by synthesis, taking advantage of the release of pyrophosphate whenever a nucleotide is incorporated in an open 3' DNA strand. Once a plate is loaded, nucleotides are incorporated based upon a sequence provided by the software. Once released, the pyrophosphate is used in a reaction that results in the release of ATP, which is used by luciferase to convert luciferin to oxyluciferin, resulting in the emission of light. The emitted light is collected by a CCD camera and recorded as peaks, also known as pyrograms. Any nucleotides not incorporated into the DNA strand are degraded by apyrase to prevent background noise. This procedure involves the following steps. Assay design, PCR, gel electrophoresis for quality control, and pyrosequencing. So let's get started with pyrosequencing. In order to perform pyrosequencing, a PCR product must first be prepared. PCR for pyrosequencing requires more cycles than most PCRs in order to ensure that all of the primer is used up roughly 50 cycles. Pyrosequencing also requires that one of the PCR primers is biotinylated. Lastly, it is important to note that an internal primer is also required. Efficient assay design may be carried out with software provided through pyrosequencing. To ensure contamination is not present and to confirm PCR product is present, a gel should be run on a few samples as well as a negative control. To make the pyrosequencing plate, Add 12 microliters of the pyrosequencing primer mix to the 96 well pyrosequencing plate. This requires a mixture of 43.2 microliters of the internal primer along with 1,396.8 microliters of annealing buffer. Cover the pyrosequencing plate with adhesive film if the setup is to take longer than 50 minutes. To each well of the 96 well PCR product, Add 70 microliters of sephiros bead mix that contains 240 microliters streptavidin coated sephiros beads, 4,560 microliters of binding buffer, which is made of tris, sodium chloride, EDTA, and tween 20, and 3,600 microliters of water, and replace the lid securely. Place the 96 well PCR product plate with the bead mix in a plate shaker for five minutes at room temperature. Make sure the lid is secured to prevent any cross-contamination between the wells. This step will allow thorough annealing of the streptavidin coated sephiros beads to the biotin tag that is located on the PCR primer. Set up a workstation for prepping the plates that includes the reagent troughs, PCR product and bead mix tray, and the pyrosequencing primer tray. Make sure that the PCR product and bead mix plate, as well as the pyrosequencing primer tray, are properly aligned so that the negatives are in the same orientation before transferring samples. Shake the vacuum tool, which is turned off, in clean water to release any beads or debris that may be on it. Discard the remaining water, refill the trough, and turn the vacuum on. Leave the vacuum tool in the trough until all water has been removed, which is approximately 30 seconds. Place the filter tips of the vacuum tool into the wells of the PCR bead mix plate and let it remain until all liquid has been removed from the plate. 
Gentle rocking may be used to prevent surface tension. Place the vacuum in the 70% ethanol trough. When the liquid begins to flow through the tubing, allow the filter tips to suck up the ethanol for five seconds. Repeat for the 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide, which denatures the DNA to single-stranded PCR, and for the washing buffer to cleanse and neutralize the PCR product. Disconnect the vacuum hose from the vacuum tool and place the vacuum tool into the pyrosequencing plate containing the pyrosequencing primer and annealing buffer mix. If the vacuum hose is still connected when placed into the pyrosequencing plate, the primer mix will be sucked through the tips causing you to lose your PCR product. Gently shake or rock the tips of the vacuum in the wells of the pyrosequencing plate to disperse your PCR product. Remove the vacuum tool from the pyrosequencing plate once the shaking or rocking is complete and reconnect the vacuum tool to the hose and place the tool into the clean water to cleanse it for the next plate. Place the pyrosequencing plate on a heat block for two minutes at 80 degrees Celsius. After two minutes, remove the plate from the heat block and place on a cool surface. Once cooled, an adhesive film can be used to cover the plate unless the plate will be run within 15 minutes to prevent evaporation. And now it's time to begin pyrosequencing. 